It's amazing watching children run. They're so vibrant, so alive, so graceful, yet often on the edge of control. As parents, we want to run along beside them, holding out our hands to catch them when they tumble, to keep them safe. It's a sobering moment when we realize we can't always be there. That's why there are few decisions as important and as potentially life-changing as choosing a school for our children. In the next few minutes, we'll talk about the unique mission of Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. You'll learn where we've come from and what we believe. You'll see into the minds and hearts of committed Christian teachers. Most important, you'll hear real parents from a wide range of faiths candidly discuss their personal experiences. They'll tell you that a Seventh-day Adventist education means high academic quality. They'll say it means caring Christian teachers. And they'll describe a safe atmosphere of openness and acceptance. If that's what you want for your kids, I believe you'll find it all at this Seventh-day Adventist school. As our children race headlong towards success, it's a choice that's truly safe and sound. Like many Protestant denominations, the roots of the Seventh-day Adventist Church can be traced back to early 19th century America, a time of great religious excitement and revival. Our pioneers believed in the sanctity of the Seventh-day Sabbath and in the soon coming of Jesus, thus the name Seventh-day Adventists. Guiding this small group of believers was a remarkable woman named Ellen White. A tireless leader, she spoke and wrote extensively on topics ranging from parenting and witnessing to health and teaching. The author of 128 books, her writings still provide comfort, guidance, and instruction for Seventh-day Adventists around the world. They have led millions to a closer walk with Christ. Today, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a fast-growing worldwide organization of more than 10 million members. Its ministry includes a health care system of more than 460 hospitals and clinics and the world's largest Protestant educational system, one that spans the globe with nearly 6,000 grade schools, high schools, colleges, and universities. Over 120 years ago, our pioneers envisioned a well-rounded, holistic education that included physical, mental, spiritual, and moral training. Their God-given insights still guide the mission of this Seventh-day Adventist school. The first thing I do when parents walk in is I say, I can talk for a lot. In two minutes, you'll see it happen in the classroom. Let's go watch. An uncompromising commitment to quality has always been at the heart of Seventh-day Adventist education. We're determined to do things well, to make no compromises, to dedicate all of our energy and every possible resource to the future of young people just like yours. Most parents automatically think of academics when they think of a quality education. And we have a lot of evidence that Adventist schools do very well in that area. About 30% of public school students go on to college. And one of the finest systems in our country, the Roman Catholic system, sends about 50% on. But our students, about 66% of them, go on to college which illustrates the emphasis that our church has always placed on education. You're talking orderly classrooms, you're talking small numbers of kids in the room, you're talking a lot of interaction with the teachers, you're talking uh, new teaching styles. The students are engaged at every level. Uh, there's a love and an affection for their teachers. There's an excitement and an enthusiasm you see when they're running into the door in the morning. I don't want anybody making excuses for my children's um, lack of academic achievement. I want them to succeed and I want them to be pushed. The tools are given the child to be able to compete worldwide later on. We're not teaching just reading, writing, and computers. We're teaching lifelong learning. We want them to aim for the highest level. All things are possible through Christ. And when I teach my young students, I teach with that in mind, that there is nothing impossible that they cannot achieve. Take my students in test them against anyone else and I think you'll see the results. It's quite rewarding. I think that God calls us to use our minds and I think that we need to be using those to the highest, our very highest potential. I think we need to be the best people that we can be. I continually take classes and um, just continue to grow and be on the cutting edge of, of what's happening in education because I feel like the children deserve the whole package. I will be a successful teacher if 
my students come to know Jesus Christ and seek to glorify Him in whatever they undertake. It doesn't matter if they make a lot of money. If they know the difference between right and wrong, to me, that is success. They don't come back very often and say, I'm an honest person now because of you. But you see in all the little ways, and, and in my opinion, most of life are in the insignificant daily acts. If you have a really good teacher that cares about children and loves the Lord and wants to do it the right way and gives her 150 percent, I think that's where you get the quality. I think they deserve the best and they are getting the best with an Adventist education. They really are. Of course, there is much more to a superior education than great test scores, the latest technology, or high college acceptance rates. What truly sets Seventh-day Adventist education apart is an extraordinary level of caring and concern for each individual student. Everyone in that school, from the teacher to the uh, maintenance person, cares about each individual student. My, my kids feel loved by their teachers. My kids feel, feel special. They feel important. Most of the teachers know most of the kids by their first name, and you know, that's really something. That's the thing that drives you is your relationship with every child, and those children stay with you forever. They stay a part of your heart. It's just it's, uh, hard to believe that people put that much into it all the time, and as often as they can. Anytime they can see an opportunity. I mean, I'm speaking from one child's point of view. I can't imagine what they do for everybody else, too. I'm sure they don't do it just for my boy, but they do a lot. You have to put everything in God's hands and ask God that He will use you and that He will help you to be that nurturing person that He meant you to be. If we talk to children about the love of their Heavenly Father, we must show them what love is. The children feel free to come and tell me their problems, ask me for help, um, whatever they want. It's like mom and dad. No other school do I know of where you can have the teacher's home phone number if you need to call them at night. Uh, with the problem. My son called the teacher a couple of times because he forgets about the homework, even little things that really probably, you know, some teacher thinks it's annoying, but never. They love kids, and not only kids, parents also. It's really nice to have a school where they want the parents to be there anytime, anytime. I express my concerns to them, and we work together on whatever the issues may be. So I know they care that way. And sometimes they give me suggestions that I never even thought of. I feel like I can share with them some things I'm working with my kids on, not just academically, but some of the emotional and, um, again, spiritual things. And that they can work with me on that. You want to send the, the, your kids to where they care about your kids just as much as their kids. It's, a, it's amazing that they care so much. So there it is excellent teachers that care a lot and love your child. Our goal is to provide a safe, well-rounded, and spiritually centered environment. This essential atmosphere will be created for your child through the guidelines and policies of this school. In other words, through the rules. Well, there are rules. Our kids, I would say, would probably say, well, maybe some, <laughs> there are too many rules sometimes. But uh, I think it's good for them to learn structure. And uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. I agree with rules. <laughs> There are no weird rules for me in this school. They all make sense to me because they're all born out of sensibility, uh, good health, good moral ethics, good family values. Having a structure and having rules are part of, I think, loving a child because it's a structure that they need. Yeah, we're stricter in one sense, but if it's done in a, a grace-oriented way, I don't think they recognize them as strict rules. My kids don't come home depressed. They don't come home um, because there's, there's been something that's gone on the playground that was not addressed. Children don't harass one another. Um, children feel safe around other children. They're not bullied, they're not hurt. You know, it's taken care of. It isn't allowed to go on and on. I've had both of my children come home who have been called on the carpet for saying something unkind, which should, could be emotionally damaging to somebody else. Awesome, they need to learn that. To send them to a school like this that is basically Given the same thing that you are giving them at home, you can breathe a little easier. Yes. You know. The school teaching them what is right, what is wrong as a human beings, it is the most important thing, I think.
They're also rewarded for appropriate behavior. They, they have lots of opportunities to you know, be recognized for being um, good students or for being um, caring friends. We get more excited when we can reinforce the positive. You know, if we catch a student doing something good, we hit them hard in a positive way with that. When people do make mistakes, it's not the end of the world. We're not going to toss them to 